Anil Hasu and welcome to the Busan Midnight Movie. I'm your host Donald. Tonight's feature is the mystery revenge thriller Fog Island, but first, the penultimate episode of Zoro's Black Whip. Last time, Vic and Barbara escaped a landslide by climbing out a window that seems wouldn't have helped them escape. The bandits steal all the horses from the surrounding areas, and Vic uses one of the bandits' horses to find their hideout. Vic is almost competent, but that's just a fake out and Barbara has to save him because, side note, Barbara is a badass. However, in the fight, Barbara gets pitchforked by one of the bandits. And now, while I explain tonight's plans to my guests, enjoy episode 11 of Zoro's Black Whip, Flaming Juggernaut. I might take you to the big boy for the right kind of a cut. We won't have any trouble, but we've got to act quick. Where do we see him? Crescent City. Let's go. Stand where you are, Gordon. Take his gun, Black. Besides recovering the stolen horses, we captured a valuable prisoner. I'll rest better with that varmint in the calaboose. He isn't in jail, Ten Point. We've got him locked in the saddle room out at the ranch. He, he might escape. That's what we want. What? As soon as we can figure a way that'll make him lead us to his chief. That's the trouble, Barbara. Once we turn him loose, we don't know where he'll go. He might just ride to some hideout. What we need is a scheme to make the outlaw leader go to wherever you trail Baxter. That's right. But how do we do it? Through the Citizens Committee. We're pretty sure he's a member of it, or gets his information from one. We'll call a meeting of the committee today, and then you can explain. Unfortunately, my prisoner got away. I left him in charge of Miss Meredith's horse wrangler, Martin. He double-crossed me and released Baxter. I hope you brought him to town for trial. He's dead. He reached for his gun when I accused him, and I had to shoot him. What about Baxter? Couldn't you pick up his trail? No. Martin had a note in his pocket written by Baxter, evidently intended for his chief, although it had no address or signature. Have you got the note? No. I left it at the ranch, but it was worthless. Couldn't you remember what it said? It said, uh, tell the chief I'll meet him at the usual hideout. I know who the Black Whip is. That's more than any of us know. It puts the Black Whip's life in danger. I'll print a warning to him on the front page. Gordon, on behalf of this committee, I want to thank you for getting back those stolen horses. I don't deserve any thanks after the way I bungled the Baxter business. Mm -hmm. 
Gordon doesn't know it, but he delivered Baxter's message to the right party. Yeah. Baxter must be at the lookout mine. Yes, and he knows the Black Whip's name. I'll leave for the mine right now. Right. Are you willing to talk to save your neck? Yeah, I'll talk. I ain't gonna take the rap alone. Get him up, quick. Where did you get that gun? A friend of mine tossed it in the window. Keep him up. I reckon this one isn't full of blanks. You think I'd fall for a gag as old as that? Now you're going with me. Don't try anything or I'll drill you. Get moving. fixed, didn't you? A horse for me to grab and another one for you to follow me. Been a good idea if it worked. You'll wish you'd never thought of it. Get on your horse. Should have been here a long time ago. Unless, uh, unless the whole thing is a trick of Gordon's. If it is, he must suspect somebody on the committee. That's why he didn't show us that note. I bet there wasn't a note. It's a trap. Say, I gotta get out of here before anybody sees me. See if it's clear. Stepped into it himself. Bax is bringing them in. Good. What 
What's going on here? Who's... It's the chief. Gordon cooked up a story about you escaping with important news. Oh, so that's why he tried to pull that old gun loaded with blanks gag on me. But I was too smart for him. Now, here's the deal, Gordon. You tell us who the whip is if you want to save your life. That won't save my life. Ask your dumb friend to take off the mask. I'll talk to him or no one. All right, you've had your chance. Tonight's feature is Fog Island. Ex-convict Leo Grainer invites those he believed wronged him to his island for a night of revelation and revenge. Hey, that's the same set we're on now! How interesting! I've also invited all my friends to this island operated by my friend Harvey to ask them questions about who's been putting these numbered shirts on my show. Seems sinister. And it seems one of my friends has already decided to take a little nap. While I try to find out what's been going on, why don't you enjoy tonight's feature, Fog Island.
Leo? Couldn't you sleep? No. My room is cold and damp. Only this hateful fog seems to be at home there. I told you this island was no place for you. My mother lived here. And died here. Violently. She lived here for your sake. Kale, I don't blame you for resenting me. I hadn't realized the name Leo Granger was still headline news. I never imagined that the press would revive the whole dirty mess again. Dead. I shall remain isolated here for a long while. But that's no reason for you to stay buried on this forsaken island. Leo, I don't hold you accountable for the position I find myself in. It's just that, for the present at least, I, too, would like to avoid the public. In fact, for a while, I'd like not to see anybody. And I'm afraid that won't be possible, Gail. If you insist on remaining here. Why? There are a few people I must see. Some, shall we say, associates. You're going to let them come out here? I'm going to invite them out here. Surely you don't think they'd accept your invitation. Well, they'd be afraid to. I have an idea that their greed will outweigh that fear. Their greed? Yes. It was their greed that made them invest heavily with me. Because they thought I could make more money for them than anyone else. Then when my financial empire crashed, they were the first to cry swindler. Now, if I can intimate to them, they will have a chance of sharing in that supposed loot. They'll respond to my invitation. That. I'm just knocking on my pipe, dear. No, I meant that noise outside. It sounded like the branch of a tree. Wind must be coming up. I'll go and see. What is it, Doc? I thought you might put me up, Leo. What do you want it for this time? Oh, merely petty loss. I had to eat. I couldn't get a job after serving my term with you. The newspapers printed our pictures again. Everybody recognized me. It won't be convenient to keep you here too long. I've invited some of our friends over for the weekend. That crowd that sent us up? How did you know that? You were more confidential as my cellmate than as my employer. And you were less of a menace behind prison bars than you were in my accountant's cage. 
I have the same score to settle with that crowd that you have. I could be of help to you. You might. Let's talk it over. Go to the small door under this balcony. It's open. Wait for me there. Won't be too long. I said wait for me there. I discovered why you failed in business. You surrounded yourself with the wrong people. I didn't surround myself with them. Sylvia Jordan did. How could she? Blackmail? Practically. As my secretary, she knew a lot about my private affairs, which gave her a certain amount of influence. Then when I married your mother instead of her, Sylvia became vitriolic. She sold me out to her friends, Richfield, Kavanaugh, a whole double-crossing gang that railroaded me. I wouldn't have cared if they'd stopped at that, but they didn't. One of them, maybe the whole group indirectly, was responsible for the death of your mother. Leo, what are you saying? Oh, the certainty surrounding the murder of your mother was obviously prearranged. Isn't it logical, Gail, that this group, having put me safely away in prison, should come back here to learn from karma? The whereabouts of the fortune I was supposed to have sorted away. Failing, they struck her down fatally. And they ransacked the place until they were disturbed by the launch returning with the servants. But if any of them did murder Mother, do you think they'd risk coming back out here? I don't forget they didn't get what they came after. I tell you, they won't accept. Well, let's wait and see. Bronson Psychic Research Laboratory. Alec Richfield. This is Emily. I was in gross casting a horoscope, otherwise I would have known it was you wanting to contact me. You received an invitation? Wait a minute. Let me see. It's from Leo Granger, inviting you to a weekend at Fog Island. Just a minute. Furthermore, I can tell you the date. It's for the 16th. What? Well, of course my powers of divination haven't diminished. What do you make of it, Emily? Well, are you consulting me professionally as an astrologist or socially as a friend? Well, I thought as a good friend of old standing. In that case, I'd say Leo wanted something. Advice. As you may recall, he never went into any big ventures without first consulting me. Yes. And you never advised him without first asking John Cavanaugh what to tell him. Cavanaugh was very generous with me when I influenced Leo's transactions. Yes. And your influence paid you well. However, I'm curious to know what you think Leo's up to. Well, I, for one, am going out to Fog Island to find out. And you? I don't know yet. I haven't decided. Nevertheless, I'll probably see you out there amongst the others. And just uh, who would the others be? Why, our own little crowd, of course. John Cavanaugh, Sylvia Jordan, and... Yes, that's right. What is Leo Granger to say, John? How do you know this is from Leo Granger? This is a private secretary for years. I might at least be expected to recognize his handwriting, don't you think? <laughs> oh, of course. Have you read Between the Lines? Read what? That I might see justice done. Well? 
does it occur to you that Leo may have found out how you played up to Karma while he was out of the way? I didn't. I always liked Karma. There was no point in avoiding her just because he got into trouble. And there was no point, I suppose, in your chartering that boat all by yourself just to call on her at Fog Island. Who said I chartered a boat? The man who owned it. He also admitted taking a veiled woman out to the island, alone. I never wear veils. Besides, why should I want to see Karma? To get information. That needn't exclude you in Leo's mind as one of Alex henchmen. How do you know that? I know Leo Granger. I know the way his mind works. He's a very suspicious and vindictive man. How about Kingsley? Emmeline Bronston? Yes, even you. Don't forget the damaging effect your testimony as his private secretary had on the case. I'm not forgetting it. Nevertheless, I don't expect Leo ever to forgive me. Leo Granger will never forgive any one of us. Five years in the penitentiary can do a lot to a man. Not to Leo Granger. You get one of these? The same? Identically. And I dare say there's a half a dozen others floating around amongst our erstwhile associates. Should you go? I think so. You're not afraid? Are you? Well, not exactly afraid, but, uh... But what? Maybe intrigued. After all, he got away with quite a fortune. If he's going to pay off, I want to be there. That's what I thought. And if you go, I'll go. And if we go, the others will go. Will they? There's safety in numbers. John and you? Never better. No, Leo. Well, Sylvia, this is a curious place. Yes, yeah, strangely enough, it was built by pirates. But you shouldn't have any difficulty in finding your way around, John. Thank you. Nice to see you again, Sylvia, after all this time. 
Thanks, Leo. You're looking well. You know, penitentiaries aren't exactly a health resort. I wouldn't recommend them to my friends. There's a fire waiting. Thank you. Leo. <laughs> if it's any consolation to you, your water sign predicts satisfaction for you here. What about you, Emily? Me? Don't you know a seer is never any good for herself? That's a climb. Getting soft, Alec. Oh, not so you notice it, Leo. Of course, cigars may have cut my wind a bit, but I still smoke them when I want them. Something I was forced to give up, cigars. You got those that I sent you? Yes, I got them, but they weren't my fancy. However, my cellmate enjoyed them and survived. Lucky. Hello, Mr. Granger. I'm Jeff Kingsley, son of Jefferson Kingsley, to whom you sent an invitation. Apparently, you didn't know Dad died a month ago. Oh, no, I... I didn't. I'm sorry. You don't mind, of course, my coming out here to see justice done? Of course not. Come in. Thank you. know all the others? I introduced myself to them on the launch on the way out. Yes, I know everyone, including your stepdaughter. Although I don't know that she remembers me from college. Hello. Hello. It's been a long time. Yes. Surprised? Somewhat. Would you like me to explain? I don't think that's necessary. You're not very glad to see me, are you? Should I be? Mm, maybe not. Would it bore you out any if I were to tell you I'm glad to see you? Thank you. I'm sure you're all wondering why I invited you here. So let's settle that question right now at the beginning. I invited you out here for, let me say, retribution. Now, retribution is not a word. It can mean so many things. It could mean reward. The return of money you think I stole from you. It could mean giving you an opportunity of getting even with me. Or with each other. It could mean revenge. Seeking a life for a life. You see, you killed something very dear to me. It might have been friendship. It might have been my ideals. It might have been my wife. Perhaps you never knew it, but I happen to love karma. She was more than just a wife to me. She was my ideal, my friend. Whichever one of you killed her will kill again and just as wantonly. So let me warn you, the innocent mind you, to be wary of the murderer whenever he or she finds it necessary to strike again. And that, my dear friends, concludes the business of the evening. Now let's all be as sociable as we can. Hmm? Oh, I omitted to mention that we have another house guest, Doc Lake. You all remember Doc Lake? I'm sure. My accountant, who was sent up with me. Doc, our friends are having a little drink. Perhaps you'd care to join them. Good evening. Yes. Since Leo puts it so delicately, I'd be delighted to have a drink. And a new old acquaintance. Oh, by the way, I'm afraid I had to send the launch back to the mainland for some flight repairs. It'll be back in the morning, probably. In the meantime, I'm quite sure you'll find every convenience on this island, except, of course, the telephone. Dinner will be at 8.30. when it was in the hands of pirates, to let a man eat his fill, then permit him to know his fate. I'm not so barbaric, of course. I'm merely following the old custom by giving each one of you 
a token favor, or clue, shall we say, to retribution. your happiness, my dear. Oh, Kingsley, that is a superstition of the gift of a nice or cut friendship. I'm not superstitious, are you? Hmm? Not with this in my hand, I'm not. I think I retire. I have been used to very early hours these last few years. I think our guests will enjoy a little music, if you feel so disposed. Anything special you would like? No, anything you like. Preferably something favoring the woodwinds. Why the woodwinds, Leo? I don't know, Leo. There's something very plaintive about the music of oboes, flutes, clarinets, and something very enticing. Mind if I join you? And if I did? I'd join you anyway. You tried that before. And miss? And this time? I'm your guest, remember? Not mine. Leo Granger's. From your point of view. All of which means you're not going to tell me? That's right. Which also means you don't trust me? Right. Or do you understand yours? Yours, Dr. Lake. I suspect Leo wants to keep track of you. <laughs> Mine is really quite simple. Leo always said my pencils weren't practical. The eraser, of course, is one of Leo's little innuendos. I have a feeling Leo is not in his right mind. Have you felt that? Do you understand, I hope, that I have never actually practiced the profession of medicine. Nevertheless, that doesn't prevent you from hazarding a personal opinion. Not necessarily. Uh, but as a student of the occult, perhaps you could hazard an opinion. The sign, Pisces. Of course you know what his sign is the case. Two fishes swimming in opposite direction and with Jupiter in the ascendant. I should not like to predict what would happen. 
Uh, his health, never too sturdy, hasn't been aided by prolonged inactivity. I shouldn't like to hazard an opinion either. You know, Doctor, I think you and I have something in common. No? What's that, may I ask? We've both been in Leo's confidence. I, from an astral point of view, have been in his spiritual confidence. And uh, you, from a business point of view, have been in his financial confidence. Oh. So, possibly by pooling our information, we might work more or less together to our mutual advantage. Clever of you to deserve that. Multiplication tables, two times two, and so on. It might be one of Leo's subtle warnings, insinuating you're not to attempt any more juggling his figures to your own satisfaction. But I've got a feeling it goes deeper than that. Tables, skulls. An Alec. Oh, I didn't see. He stuffed it in his pocket too fast. Alec knows something. Kingsley, I don't trust him. Suppose you watch out for young Kingsley. I will. I didn't know you played so well. Didn't you? You know, there was a time I thought I knew pretty much about you. Did you? Remember the long walks in the rain? Horseback rides? Tennis? The time you beat me six to three. The funny things you used to like, your craving for red, chocolate sundaes, opal. They weren't your birthstones, were they? Oh, I thought not. They were always bringing you hard luck. Like the time we were going to the symphony together and you had on your new high-heeled red slippers. Your heel got caught in a grating. You know, it's a shame I couldn't get those nails to stay in. We went down the aisle together and... You don't know how much trouble I had getting those tickets right in the third row, just to show you off. Oh, I've still healed, by the way, but I don't suppose you have any use for it, do you? I haven't any use for any heel. No, I thought not. But will you ever forget our picnic down by the river bank? With that great field of daisies by the weeping willows? <laughs> Remember how ecstatic you were about the weeping willows? No, you haven't done what Leo asked you to. You mean the woodwind? Yes. Have you forgotten? No.
able to look into the future. What are you saying? You want me to cast horoscopes? Oh, no, nothing so individual. I mean, something that would let us all in, like, uh, you know, a seance. Oh, a seance. Well, if you're all in accord, why don't you gather around the desk? Good. sensation of drowning. Stop it, stop it. I don't want to hear any more. Very well, then. It's strange, but I can't seem to reach you. You seem to bar the way. No. Bars are in the way. It will skip me for the moment. And for yourself, what do you see? Myself? It's very difficult to see for myself. But I feel about to be elevated. Mind telling me how you did it? It was no trick. Tonight's feature is Fog Island, and I initially wasn't going to screen this movie. My first pick was The Ninth Guest, a film that I included clips from in the promo to this episode. It has a very similar plot. People are invited to an isolated space and, one by one, driven to suicide. Ultimately, I went with tonight's film, even though the print isn't as sharp, because it has more vim to it. Also, the district attorney from Miracle on 34th Street. I love that movie. I also love that my guests keep <clears throat> taking their leave, rather than admit to who's been messing with my show. Hopefully all mysteries will be solved in the second half of tonight's feature, Fog Island. Where are you going? I have an idea. What about? Gail's key. Oh. Is 
seance over already, Emily? Yes, Alec, I'm rather tired tonight. Why don't you turn in? I think I will. I wonder if you'd get me a book, Alec. I'm tired, but not sleepy. I thought perhaps you might pick out something from Leo's shelf over there. Don't you think you'd better select your own reading material, Emily? You have such a good mind. Oh. Cut, cut. Would you be looking for any book in particular, Alec? Oh, Emily? Something light, of course. Oh, yeah. How about this? What is it? Crime and punishment. <laughs> Ideal. Thank you, Alex. Say, it's getting late. Time we're all turning in. How about it, John? Ready to call it a night? We are. I might as well. Ready, Emily? Telling me what you're running away from. Am I running away? Of course. First from all your friends by coming out to this desolate spot to live, and now from everyone inside. What right have you to pry into my private affairs? Maybe I like you. You have a very peculiar way of showing it. Well, I'm a very peculiar person. Yes. Maybe I like you more than you realize. Really? I realize you're just a little girl in a lot of trouble. What trouble? That I mean to find out. Is that all you mean find out? No, but I'll do for a starter. And after that? Gail, have I ever done anything to make you mistrust me? You came out here with the others, didn't you? Obviously. Why? To see you. I don't believe you. Gail, why don't you break down and be yourself? Why don't you let me help? There's only one way you can help me, and that is to leave me alone. Now, look here, young lady. Don't try my patience too far. You might as well know once and for all I have no intention of leaving you alone. Very well, then. I'll leave you alone. in to borrow some cleansing cream. Well, of course. I'm not robbing you, am I? No, I seldom use it. Oh, but you should nightly, my dear. Too much bother. Nothing should be too much bother to protect your skin. In this climate, one doesn't need to take the trouble. But if you don't take the trouble to preserve your skin now while it's healthy, you'll regret it. I'll chance that. Already it shows the signs of neglect. Ma? What an interesting room. The mother didn't decorate it. These things were here when Leo bought the place. Leo bought it? I thought Karma bought it for him. Leo bought it in car. Mm -hmm. Tidying up a bit, sir. As a butler? 
Or as an escaped lifer, Al Jenks. That's a lie. What, that you're an escaped lifer? I acted a bit phony as a butler when Granger wasn't around. I made some pretty wise contacts in the big house. Contacts that could find out a lot of things. I wrote a few letters. I had some answers. Came over with the mail for the guests tonight. Like this one. Hello, Dots Cook. Uh, the eel you describe with the scar across his left palm. Certainly, Al Jenks, the lifer who crashed out of here about a month ago. I thought you ought to know because... Enjoying yourself, Doc? Yes. I was just uh, looking for you, Leo. Indeed. The guests seem a bit ill at ease. That's a pity. I've given them the run of the house. What more could they have me do? Give them enough rope, eh, Leo? Something like that. They're all wondering what you've got up your sleeve. Including you, Doc. Have you forgotten, Leo? I know what you've got in mind for them. Have you forgotten that time in stir when I showed you how they framed the two of us and you blew your top? And that day when you learned your wife had been murdered. The day you really went stir crazy. Have you forgotten what you said to me that day? Under the circumstances, no one could hold me accountable for what I said. Couldn't they? And especially if what you said came to pass. Well, what did I say, Doc? Plenty. And if it took your last dollar. That's just exactly what it did. What, take your last dollar? Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. That's a fact. However, if you prefer to believe us, do that I have a fortune buried here, I can't prevent you. But you said you were looking for me. What for? I thought you might like to know what your guests are doing. I know pretty well what they're doing. After all, there was nothing I could ever tell Karma that was encouraging. All I saw for her was trouble and worry in her tragic end. You ever saw that? Oh, yes, quite clearly. And in detail, I saw her choking her into insensibility. That's a lie. It is? How do you know? She wasn't choked to death. She was stabbed with a knife. Perhaps you know for certain that she wasn't first strangled into unconsciousness. You're making the whole thing up to give the impression you're clairvoyant. Unless you had something to do with her murder. I had less to do with her murder than you had. Why, you fraud, if you did, I... Come in. Perhaps you ladies don't realize it, but your voice is when you get excited. Thank you for stopping us, Alex. And you're keeping this young lady from her rest. You're very considerate, Mr. Richfield. I really would like to go to bed. Of course. I merely thought I might... Come along, Alex. It was your idea to leave Gail alone.
pipe cleaners, I thought, before I left them here. I didn't know you smoked a pipe. Oh, didn't you? I've always been very interested in pipes. Do you mind if I have a look at yours? Certainly. <laughs> I mustn't let you in my room. Purposely. Have a cigar. Thanks. Light. Thanks. You're not smoking? Not at the moment. Uh -huh. Very good cigar. As you should know, Alec. I have all the fun of my comforts, even managed to get a few where you sent me. Mm, you're forgetting that having a raise of your defense, we got you up with five years instead of 25. Five years was long enough for you to accomplish your purpose, Alec. Five years of receiver for Granger Incorporated gave you ample time to liquidate my enterprises for your own advantage. By the time you got through milking your enterprises, there was nothing left to liquidate. So you came over here to the island to see what you could get out of karma. I'd advise you to be careful of your accusations, Leo. You're not fooling anybody now, Alec. There's no jury here, no judge, nor will there be any witnesses. Does that constitute a threat, Leo? Take it for what it's worth, Alec. I might have let you off had you been content merely with getting me out of the way for a while. But that you put karma out of the way permanently for that, Alec. Keep away, Leo. You can't escape, Alec. Oh, can't I? <laughs> I thought so. I suspected you all along, but I wanted proof. I've got that proof now, Alec. Obviously, that was the way you struck her down. A sudden person in the dark, without warning, without giving her the slightest opportunity of defending herself. You very stupidly used the same technique, the same knife, no doubt. So you see now, I think, that you're not as clever as you thought you were. You see now, don't you, that you played right into my hands. You see now, Alec. You convicted yourself, Alec. <laughs> You've sealed your own doom. You've signed your own death. <laughs>
<laughs> very interesting, Emmeline. Very interesting indeed. And a little amusing. <laughs> what is? The fact that Leo should give you the key without the means of using it. I don't know what you mean. You know how that key opens? No. Or how to get to what it opens? No. I thought not. But I do. So it seems to me it might be wise for us, you and I, to pool our resources, shall I say, and split proceeds. Equally? Share and share alike. I'll handle the key. As you wish. Follow me. The key, the privilege is yours, my dear Emily. Just wondering what you were doing. Oh, I don't think it would do you any good to find out. about you, Jeff? How does your head feel? Oh, feels as though somebody had thrown the book at it. It was a chair. Oh, yeah, that phony doctor. I've got to find him. Jeff, take it easy, please. Well, after the way he conked me. But he's a dangerous criminal. He, he has a prison record. He's got more than that coming to him. And I think I know where to find him. Jeff, don't. Please. For my sake. For your sake? Yes, dear. Look, come on. You'd better sit down. But, Gail, you don't seem to understand. I caught him going through the desk. Gail, do you have any idea what he was looking for? Well, I think I know. Mother told me once, it's something about the top center drawer. 
Something in it or near it that exposes a secret hiding place for valuables. Valuables? Uh-huh. Well, don't you think you ought to take a look and see if we got away with anything? I have looked. I don't know how to operate it. Well, let me try. seeing you think that gun is loaded? Of course it's loaded. I loaded it myself before dinner. You don't think I'd trust you around me with a loaded gun, do you? You idiot! <laughs> How did you know I wasn't going to give you his half? <laughs> oh, I know you, John. Scout, the clue Leo gave me. You're right, Alec. What we're looking for must be hidden in here. The table. The clue that Leo gave me. This slab here. Um, yes, John, give me a hand in the tray. Oh, wait a minute. Let's have it understood now. We share it three ways. Let's make it four ways. Just for the sake of sociability. What makes you imagine you're entitled to anything? I know where the bodies are buried. All right. Understood then. Let's put four ways. Now, give me a hand. investments did the rest. May I suggest you divide it equally among yourselves so that I may feel justice is done. Sincerely, Leo Granger. I don't believe it. I do. It's just like Leo to have the last laugh. John, look! The key Leo Granger gave you opens that box. Mother's jewelry. Jeff, wait, listen to this. Gail, darling, this is all that's left of my inheritance. When Leo got into his financial difficulties, I gave him everything else I had to try to save him. But it went with the rest, into unfortunate investments. Please don't blame him too much. He tried. But Gail, darling, leave this island as soon as you can. There's no good will ever come to anybody here. God bless you and try to be happy. Your 
loving mother. you put yourself through needlessly, Gail. Needlessly? Yes. Don't think I haven't seen through you. Don't think I don't know why you ran away from us all. It was your wounded ego. Ego? But, Jeff, every place I went, people looked at me accusingly. I knew what they were thinking. They were thinking she's Leo Granger's stepdaughter, and she'll come in for her share of his loot, too. I knew what you were thinking, Gail, but you were wrong. Dead wrong. Why... I'll bet you even thought that was the way I felt about you. Of course. And you thought I came out here with those cheap chiselers to grab off a hunk of loot. Oh, I didn't know what to think, Jeff. I didn't want to, but how could I think otherwise? You came over with them. Recognize the motor. How long will it take you to pack? For what? Well, you're carrying out your mother's wishes, aren't you? Remember, she said leave the island at once, and that's now. Now, but Jeff. Don't argue. I'm taking you away from this place at once, even if I have to kidnap you. You won't have to kidnap me, Jeff. Well, then hurry. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Thanks, Jeff. I'm ready. Let's get going. Oh, but I'll have to find Leo and tell him I'm going. He isn't in his room. I found Leo. He has no objection to your going. Oh, but don't you think we ought to find out if any of the others want to come with us? I found that out, too. They're not coming with us. Not this trip. I'll send the launch back to them later. The sun on the mainland, Gail. Sun. That's what you need, Gail, sun. More than anything else. Unless it's me. I'll settle for both, Jeff. That was Fog Island, and what a fun little creeper, despite the performance of Commander Data. Hey Hollywood, just cast actors. Stop trying to do all your productions with computer stand-ins. Uh, let's take a look at our next feature. A science fiction film that asked the terrifying question, what if you made a movie where nothing happened? Careful, you don't want any surprises. See the terror of people walking in a field, the horror of idle chatter. Was he expecting paratroops from Mars? The nightmare of clerical work. See what evil the bowling ball from outer space intends in The Night Caller. Next time on the Busan Midnight Movie. <laughs> well, I mean, that's very funny, Grant. All my friends are taking naps, and I'm still no closer to knowing what the deal is with these shirts. Five friends were here, then four, then three, then... Wait, it's a countdown. But a countdown to what? And by who? Everyone's here except... Oh no. Uh, Kunsanida, and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed yourself, call for help. And as always, stay safe, stay inside, and stay spooky.